G'day everyone, welcome to the How To Halo Assault Rifle at an EVA firm for beginners part 2. And my name is of course Andrew DFT. Now of course this is part 2. So you've gone through part 1 and now we're at the stage where we can start to build on the top bridge and the underside, which the two remaining segments left to do for this rifle. But I won't waste your time, we'll jump straight into the video and get it started. Alright, so jumping off where we left, of course what you can do now is to start this video is to go grab a heat gun and heat up the foam from where we've got on the rifle so far. This will of course open up all the uh, crevices and really make those lines that you scored rather nice. So go ahead and do that so that way we can kick in to the new sections on this rifle. The first part we'll actually go for is doing the underbarrel section. So what you can do is grab the template and where you have these little uh, notches at the bottom you can actually trim those off along the guided line. The reason we're doing that is because it makes it a lot easier for the foam itself and especially because we're going to need to make four different layers of this, being sure to flip one side so that way you have a left and a right. Once you've done that of course we can cut out the template in this guided rectangle piece here because we're actually going to bevel this one, well, not bevel, we're going to take away this section so that way it's an internal layer rather than the current flat layer it is. So to do this, what we're gonna do is draw a depth line. You can do this about halfway through the actual foam core itself. And then we'll grab a nice sharp craft blade and carve all the way through that. Being sure to make your fingers well and truly clear of the blade so that way you don't uh, hurt yourself because we don't want you hurting yourself. And then of course you can uh, glue the new thinner piece into position to where it should actually sit. Make sure you have this nice kind of leveled terraced effect that creates the 3D look we are actually going for. So while we're working on this section, we'll actually continue and we'll do all the detail in it. So what we can do is grab the template and cut out this little perimeter line you can see along this rectangle section here, and we'll transfer it on to where it should be within the EVA foam. What you can then do is then take the template and cut it apart even further, slowly breaking apart along those guided lines and transferring all of the points to where they actually should be in well, real time and real space on the foam until we really get through all of that template and we have all those uh, new lines there sitting on that uh, leveled piece that we cut out initially. Then we can start breaking apart some of the other parts in this template. So we'll start off with the back, we'll cut off this little uh, tiny piece you can see here and we'll transfer that on, creating that vertical line that you can see here on screen and then we'll start working on maybe the more larger sections and then we'll come back to the smaller pieces later on. So going with this larger section you're cutting out this piece of the template and transferring it on just like you did with the previous and then what we'll do is we'll transfer, you can do this freehand, this circle and horizontal line into place. You can cut it out of the template if you wish but transferring it horizontal, uh, freehand shouldn't be a problem as long as you use a ruler and then kind of do your best to draw the circle. Now what we're going to do is add a horizontal line down the bottom that you can see here. The reason we're going to do this is we're going to bevel this edge. But of course to bevel we need to add a depth line so you can add that depth line in there about halfway through the thickness of the foam. Then grab a nice sharp craft blade and go straight through that foam being sure to keep the momentum so that way the uh, clean comes off nice and... Uh, well, sorry, the cut comes off nice and clean. That way it doesn't tear at the foam and you have a nice look in the end. Now comes the fun part. We can actually go and start scoring up all the lines that we've currently transferred on to this foam section. Remembering that you are having to do this on both the left and the right simultaneously. So what we can do is we can go ahead and actually start scoring through the top layer of the foam. So that's only just slicing through the very skin of it, so to speak. You're not cutting all the way through or even attempting to cut all the way through. Then once you've cut through all the uh, surface lines, or the guidelines, you can start gluing together all these uh, pieces of the foam until they're all glued together. And then what you can do is you can actually run the heat gun over it and heat it all up so that way all the scored lines really start to separate and we get to see the detail come to life. Now what we're going to do is create the little fingers that go on the under barrel section. What you can do is you can grab the template that's already existing and create a longer version of it. I recommend doing about five and a half inches if you're using four thickness um, foam mats that way it should wrap around now to do that all you're going to do is of course use the thickness of the template measure it even longer on a new piece of paper and then once you've got that template we can start making the new ones what you can then do is of course we don't need them to be that thick so you can draw in that depth line cut them in half and that way you have your nice uh, new thickness ready to go 
Now we do want to transfer in this little uh, rectangle section, so of course you can just freehand that template inside, cut it out of the template, transfer onto the foam, and you will need to make five of these to uh, really fill the gap on this underbarrel section. Now to make sure that they do sit right, I'd recommend cutting the template so that way you can then mark out where they should be sitting. So that way once you've uh, got them ready to go, you can just glue them into place and it shouldn't be too hard. But before you do that, I recommend scoring the lines on the design so that way when we heat it up, it does give it a bit more of a 3D look and those uh, lines will start to separate and give us a better, better design in the end. Then of course, once you've done that, you're just simply gluing them into position like I said before, now that we have them marked out because we used the template as a guideline, it shouldn't be too hard getting them in there nice and vertically and evenly spaced. Then run the heat gun over them, those lines should separate, and the design's really starting to come together. But to make it actually come together, we do need to actually physically glue it. Uh, words don't work as well as hot glue does. So simply put some hot glue down the seams there on the underside and then simply glue it into position. Make sure you hold it there for a while and double check both sides are sitting there evenly. Because it's three foam mats sitting onto four foam mats, you should be able to create this nice terraced effect uh, that are raised on both, uh, both sides of the prop. Now we can start to move on to the more interesting uh, sections of this gun, the top bridge piece. Now what you'll need to do is grab the template and cut out two sides, being sure to flip the template so we have a left and a right. Then what you're going to do is draw in this line you can see on the screen. This isn't in the template so you will need to freehand it. And then what you can do is you can draw in a depth line, like you can see here on screen, which goes about halfway through the foam's thickness. Because what we're going to do now is we're actually going to grab a nice sharp craft blade and bevel this edge. Why we're beveling it, you'll see in a second, as it is going to add to the nice kind of triangular effect that we're trying to achieve and there's a very significant and iconic piece and uh, look that the uh, assault rifle has, which is a rather tricky to achieve out of foam, but this is a nice and easy way to do it that shouldn't be too difficult for you guys and still give us the nice look in the end that we're going for, of course. So once you've done that, of course, you can make sure that it is nice and clean on both sides and it should be pretty much exactly the same and identical. Now what we're going to do is cut back into it. We're going to bevel off the edge along the seam or the tip of where we beveled. You don't need to measure a depth line for this. You're just going to cut in on maybe a 45 degree angle or so. Nothing too intense, but it should come to this nice kind of like sword edge kind of look or feel, I guess. Now what we need to do is add in a horizontal line here, matching the uh, tip and go straight across. And then we can jump in and bevel the interior side of this. The reason we're doing this now is because this section is going to actually bend back. So what we can do is we can simply put some hot glue into position and then bend it. You don't want an extreme bend, you just want a slight, just so it breaks the vertical uh, appearance and gives us this nice little uh, kind of edge going on here. You'll see why later on. Next what you're going to need to do is cut out the long stretched template section. Um, and then transfer that onto the foam itself. Then what we're going to do is actually bevel in while we're cutting this out. So you're going to be cutting it out by beveling it, if that makes sense. So we're beveling in on the inside, so just cutting in on a 45 degree angle along both sides of this stretch. So that way when it comes out, you should see it looking a bit like a pyramid -y, uh, pyramid shape. The uh, top and the bottom section of this, you don't need to bevel, you can just cut straight down, uh, vertical. It's just the two sides that you can uh, see here in this photo, where they are coming up to a peak. Um, so it's kind of like a pyramid, but you can definitely see what I mean by beveling in on both sides on a 45 degree angle. Then what we're going to do is, the reason why we beveled both the uh, bigger and this smaller section is because the beveled edges should be able to meet seamlessly when we glue them into position like we're doing now. You might get some overspill but just make sure you uh, clear that out of the way while it's still warm so that way it doesn't solidify and you uh, ruin your design. But really this should just be able to glue into position with those beveled edges becoming quite seamless as you bend it around and do it on both sides. Of course there is going to be some overhang, this is there just as a safety net kind of so to speak, so you just need to simply trim that off once you've got both the sides sitting flush. Now we can work on the ammo side, which is relatively easy. All you're going to do is cut out the template, transfer it to foam, and cut that out. Done. <laughs> now what you're actually going to do is we're going to make some kind of structural uh, 
pieces for this uh, bridge section. So you can reuse that uh, template we just had before for the ammo site, but then you're gonna cut off this little segment you can see here. The reason is that we have to intake uh, for the foam's uh, thickness, so we want to make three more sections which are a tiny bit smaller than what the uh, ammo screen was. As you can see, the size difference is here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the ammo screen section, not those three little ones, the ammo screen section, and at the base of it, we're gonna bevel in a 45 degree angle. You'll see why when we start to merge these two pieces together is because this is going to sit at the end. You can kind of take it in a bit just so it has that kind of lip going where the ammo screen and the uh, surface of this um, bridge sections meet and glue it into position. Then what you can do is you can grab those three little triangles and actually put them into place uh, like you can see here, evenly spaced. So that way it actually holds the walls of this bridge section so that way they don't collapse if it happened to get grabbed or pushed. It's just a convenient thing to do um, when building with foam, as it is a very malleable and uh, flexible material. We do want to kind of limit that as much as possible. Next, you can grab the template for this section here and transfer it onto the foam. You're only going to need one, but it's quite important you watch what I do now is because we're going to break apart this template, slowly transfer where these uh, lines meet, because these are going to be fold lines that we're going to need to actually bevel and cut to allow this piece to kind of bend around the nozzle of this uh, bridge section of the rifle. So simply going in and beveling both sides of this, um, these uh, horizontal lines that we've drawn, so that way the foam will now wrap, like we can see here, we're gluing it each piece in slowly, letting it dry and then moving up, and it should bend like so, allowing it to curve around that really strange formation that is, well, a very iconic um, aesthetic on the uh, assault rifle. So once that's all glued in, it should sit nicely. Make sure you just do some final touches with the glue to make sure all the seams are filled in, so that way it never bounces back. Once it's all in, we can go to the fun step and actually glue it all on. This is where the assault rifle re really starts to look like the assault rifle and it should just slot in very carefully. I recommend starting at the back of the, uh, the screen, the ammo counter section, and working your way forward. That way you can really apply some force to wrap the uh, front section around and then join both the middle and the bottom together cohesively. But it should work pretty well. And then you can use some hot glue to touch up any seams that didn't get filled and wait for that to dry and it should look rather good. But from these photos on screen, you can definitely see why we beveled uh, those edges before, as it allows us to really give it that nice, very iconic triangular look out of the EVA foam, which is something that would have been pretty hard to do. Rather than uh, creating a vertical look, I wanted to be able to implement this in, in a nice, easy way that was both um, being able to pick up and teach via the video for you guys, and most of you guys as beginners. Now don't worry, we're nearly at the end, but first we're going to add in some little detail pieces on this upper bridge section to really give it that nice look we're going for. So what we're going to do is we're going to break apart this section on the template here, and we'll transfer this kind of curved bendy piece in and make sure it does sit relatively flush on the uh, assault rifle so that way you know exactly where it's going. Once we've transferred that line in, we're going to then break apart the uh, very front perimeter line and then also transfer that in onto the foam. But relatively the next minute is really just breaking apart the template piece by piece and slowly adding in all the lines and where they should actually be on the actual foam. Being sure to do it on both the left and the right side simultaneously so that way you're not going too far ahead of yourself because it would be hard to backtrack the template. But transferring that all on it should look relatively nice like that. I recommend doing it lightly so that way you can then go back with a sharp, I'm sorry, a straight edge and make it flush and relatively horizontal and vertical. Then what we're going to do is be sure to transfer the lines across so that way we're bridging the middle section so that way the left and the right come together and they should be horizontal. Okay, so now we're going to add a few pieces of detail that go in between the sections that we just laid out onto the foam. So grab the remainder of the template that you currently have and what we can now do is play it, uh, place it down and use it as a reference to draw in freehand this section that I'm doing now. It's pretty much a curved line which leads into a horizontal one which sits in between the current template uh, layout that we have and the edge of that upper bridge section. 
as you can see, they're going straight in there using a ruler, well, a Pokemon card, but same thing, um, and sitting right in the middle of those two pieces of detail. Then what you're going to need to do is in between the sections, those rectangle sections, is we're going to add a vertical line straight up. And of course, you're going to need to wrap it around the top bridge or top um, peak of the uh, section of the rifle. And it should sit relatively right in the middle or as close to right in the middle as you can, being freehand and all. Now what you're going to do is just finish off this little horizontal piece that you can see on screen here. And then we'll add in a sloped section that also is in the middle of the two designed pieces. Now we can grab a craft plate and we can actually go and score all the lines that are currently on this design. So we do have quite a few, so do take your time and be very patient and uh, quite skillful at it because they are quite close together and you do want to make sure that the blade follows the tip and the guide and the pins and the lines and everything to make sure that you're not deviating too far from the actual templates. That way we get a better result. Then of course, go through with a heat gun and then it should come out, well, looking pretty good. The details are all separated and it's looking rather nice. Make sure to hit the top section as well so that way the details wrap around and everything starts to look cohesive. Now we're approaching the end of this, but we've got a few more little tiny pieces that we have to add, such as a trigger. That's easy enough. Grab the uh, templates, transfer it onto the single piece of foam, add a depth line in just so we can carve off that uh, textured side. If you don't have a textured side, then just leave it as it is. That's perfectly fine. We just want to get rid of that by uh, adding that bevel, uh, sorry, that depth line, and then using a nice sharp blade and just trimming it off. Then simply gluing it into position and it should just slot in perfectly like that. If it doesn't for some reason, just trim it where necessary to allow it to slot in. Now next is a bonus step. I highly recommend doing it if you can obtain it. What we're going to do is we're actually going to use a technique to cover up all these seams that we can see in the foam. I use just standard art clay. Now you can pick this up very cheap no matter where, what uh, stationery or art supply store you go to. They should sell it and it's in different brands but it's all the same thing. Then you're going to grab a bit of water and in your hands you're going to roll some of the clay into a long, long, like snake-like thing like you used to do in um, your early childhood school days where you used to play with Play-Doh or whatever you used to call it. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay it down onto the foam and slowly squish it in to make it fill in all the seams and raise it over. This is kind of like using Bondo or kind of like painter's putty. It's all to fill up um, cracks and cover the seams. So that way when it dries, you can of course go back with some sandpaper and sand it flush. So that way it looks exactly like it should just fit in with the design and it's not too uh, lumpy or anything. You can sand it down to perfection and have it really smooth like you can see here. And of course, the uh, seam lines have completely disappeared. Now to add a barrel, you can do it many ways. I'm showing you a very basic way and a very cheap way is you can grab like a thick pin and actually just use that. I'm using a very simple and like 50 cent pen that you can then transfer where it should actually go and then cut that section out so you have a nice uh, hole there and you're simply going to put it into position and glue it in there and that should hold extremely well making sure that you do add enough glue to the uh, entry point and around the uh, pen or around the tube or whatever you're using to make sure it holds in position and it should actually solidify there relatively well due to the thickness of the foam, as well as the, uh, well, the glue solidifying. And then, well, it looks, it looks fine. I mean, it looks strange with a pen coming out because it's got the brands and logos and everything. But then once you paint it up, it will look perfect and no one will be able to tell the difference. Congratulations, guys. You did it. You made it to the end of the video. Sorry it was a long watch, but there is a lot of material we had to get through and I had to portray in these videos and I thought it was best to make them a long video rather than a short condensed one which wouldn't have got across all the detail and all the steps you needed to really complete this project to the standard that I know you guys can achieve it at. So this is of course what you can get by the end of it. This is a very simplistic paint job just done with three different colors, just enough to give you the portrayal of what the assault rifle should look like. But you can use many techniques and take it to a next level, even customize it yourself, giving it uh, stripes, different skins, different color tones, whatever you wish. Or hell, you can make a default one and then go through the tutorial again and pump out another few rifles to hang on a wall and have them all looking different colors. But that's up to you and I highly recommend putting your own personal touch into your own prop. But that's it. I hope this tutorial came across as uh, cohesive and informative as I intended it to be and that you guys now can go and replicate 
this prop and create your own. And remember, you can take any of these steps shown in the video and enhance it even further. This was a very basic one for beginners. This isn't even a, a true replication of what my skill level is, which I brought down to teach you guys. So you guys can definitely go further than what I'm showing here on screen. And remember, these techniques can be uh, replicated for any prop, no matter what that is, whether that's a SMG or possibly a Magnum. And of course, there's tutorials out for both of these, so you can definitely check them out in my channel if you wish, if you haven't done them already. So that way you can build up your own little uh, Halo, uh, Halo armor collection. No, sorry, prop collection. Yeah. But of course, that's about it. Leave a comment for any props you'd like to see done in this tutorial style, and let me know if this video was indeed effective, and you guys managed to uh, get what you wanted out of it. And of course, if you did, Show me the pictures, send them to me on my Facebook fan page, you can uh, message me there as well and let everyone else who's uh, also following along see what you've created. So that's it, we'll wrap up the video. Let your friends know so they can make others, click the like button, and I'll catch you guys in another tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.